Hope to the line to shoot one and one. Oh, no. Matt Neal cannot believe it, but Larry Martin. Maybe that's what the ref saw as well. Schneiders rejected. Danny Roach with a foul on Tennis at midcourt. That's four on Roach. Boy, that was really a ball that Kelvin had to score that time. Schneiders had to maybe take that one strong with two hands here instead of going a little bit soft. And Bowser got him. He's got to score or get fouled on that play. Absolutely. Tannis has had a couple of misses from the free throw line here tonight. Hope, though, is in the double bonus. Calvin has committed now its 10th foul. Only six this half for Hope. One more for Tannis, and this time he gets his team to within seven. Well, we'll see if this foul trouble uh, for Calvin uh, comes back to haunt them here in the next 6.54 times. What's really haunting Calvin is the trips when they do not get a good look. When they make shots, when they take shots, they're making them. They've given the ball away too cheaply, like right there with Snickers with a bad pass. Snickers got back to knock it away. Pretty casual, but he, he made up for it. Kevin Vandestrick not pleased at all with that pass and what just occurred there. Yeah, it was a cross-court pass through the middle of everybody, and somehow Snickers got back to make amends. But, boy, that's not the play that Calvin needs. Well, it's getting to the point of the game, Tom, where both teams really need to make each possession count. Schuster, no. Rebound up and in. What a big play there by Tyler Cruz. Nine-point margin. One of the guys with length who has been all over the offensive glass tonight. Here's Overway trying to go on Cruz. Cruz is not buying it. Tannis. Overway again. That may have been travel. Overway missed it. Schuster had it. Lost it out of bounds. But Calvin will keep possession. That was a basket clear so he can get away from a double. Going on the sideline, though, not a good thing. And then Hope turns it right back over. The sideline, you're inviting that double team. And again, this is what happens. Calvin doesn't really have a natural experienced point guard in there right now. But look at how Brink operates. He gets right back to the middle. A little shaky on the handle, but at least he's in the right position. Schneiders. Schuster, this one should go. And it Calvin on top by 11 as we approach the five-minute mark. Like you said, not many 6'10 guys can pull up and hit it from anywhere. Offensive interference, but they're going to count the basket by Bowser. Somebody tugged down the net on the way through. Probably a sensible no call there by the official. Well, Haberdink had to make a good collection of that one. Almost a takeaway. Schneider is going to try for three. Oh! Cool as you please. Calvin 80, Hope 68. Wow. Man, I did not see that coming. From the outside, no, a tough shot missed by Tannis. And now Calvin with a chance to consolidate its position. Schneider's a little out of control, well, way out of control, but then Tannis saved him with a reach in with under four and a half remaining, and more importantly for Calvin, the 17 foul Brent, which finally gets the Knights to the free throw line. And that's a good situation, obviously, for Calvin here down the stretch. Well, Schneider's, I mean, fear is not a word that he knows the meaning of at the moment. Yeah, well, it's a hope, tight game, you know, I could go in a little closer, but why bother? Well, Hope was focusing a lot there on their full court press, and uh, a lot of times when, uh, you know, you got guys out here in the middle of the floor trying to prevent ball passage lanes and such, you get the guy wide open, and uh, that's what you had there with Calvin, and he knocked it down. Schneider's now with 10, Brent. Three-point shooting, how about this number right here? Take a look at those stats for Calvin in this game. 11 of 16 from three-point land, 69% Calvin is tonight from behind the arc. That's, uh, we see teams that can't shoot 69% from the free throw line some nights, and they're shooting 69% on contested threes. Really quite remarkable. Calvin 82, hopes 68 after Schneider's rings the bell twice. Tannis, tough shot in the lane. And Tannis is up to it tonight. 
He's not giving up. He's got 24. Calvin with Powell back in right now. Almost a walk. They've got two guards out there right now. Kevin Vandestreek realizes that possession of the basketball is more crucial at this point than making baskets. Powell against the taller Logan Neal, and that's a block and a good call by Larry Martin on the sideline. It was a little dump off, and then Neal tried to jump back in to the Calvin player. Martin, an experienced ref, didn't buy it. With 3.57 remaining, we'll take our final television timeout of the night. Issue right there. But Tom Snickers with a wild miss on that free throw, so Hope hanging on by its fingertips at the moment, but not completely without Hope. Calvin's got to take care of the ball, got to make some free throws. That should have been a foul down there deep. Calvin got rattled and threw it away. Van Streak not happy with Jeff Spadoski. Crombeam doesn't want to pull the trigger from deep. Neal will, and he'll hit it. Logan Neal with eight. The lead is now suddenly just seven. It all started with that missed one in the bonus from Snickers. Approaching three minutes left in the contest. Calvin's going to need some more points, I think, to win this basketball game. Well, Hope's got a spark right now, Tom, and obviously the Dew crew and the uh, Hope faithful are starting to get into it, too. Like you said earlier, Calvin's done a good job of keeping the crowd out of it, but another shot here will uh, certainly get the crowd into it. Well, Kevin Vanistreek's going to roll the dice here with Rhodes coming back in, along with Haberding. But the guy who's going to have to step up now is the freshman from Dyer, Indiana. So both teams will be in the double bonus. That was the ninth team foul against Hope tonight. And that's a basketball player right there who stood up and coolly washed that one through. 83-75. Brink hasn't scored much, just three on the night. But he has a chance here to make it a little easier for his coach to get a breath. And he gets the bounce. Mark here as Crombeam moves into the front court, and Calvin is on top by nine. Here's Bowser, been very quiet in the second half. Tannis, not so much. He's been hot, and he's against the guy Danny Roach has been even hotter. Great cutoff by Schuster there. Neal, no, rebounded. Nice reach in block. Follow, no. Calvin's got the basketball. Did they get a timeout? Players, but Calvin... Did very well to come up with that basketball when it seemed almost halfway down two or three times. Well, I think it would be important here for Hope to try to get Will Bowser going here in the next 2.30. You know, obviously he had such an effective first half. He's only got two points here. Well, Kelvin has got to occupy the basketball here. Kelvin could get two or three. 30 second not foul down so many here with two and a half remaining. Schuster's going to send it in. Brink is going to have to go get it if he can. Schuster to Danny Rotes. Rotes has four fouls, and again, out to Snickers. And now Rotes as we approach the 220 mark. Danny Rotes guarded by Overway. Now they just need to burn time. And, uh, yeah, they didn't get to score there. They turned the ball over. Not exactly what any coach wants to see, but in the situation that you're in here, up by nine, less than two minutes to play. You're Kevin Van de Streek, you're happy with that possession. How about Bowser trying to go on the big boy? Turns and scores, and Hope gets a quick timeout. That was an unusual matchup there with Schuster hooked up on a switch with Bowser again going to the bucket. Hope pretty much needs to score every time down from here on out. And Calvin, well, we'll say it again. They need to take care of the basketball, the Knights do here in the closing seconds of this one. Well, you know Hope is going to pressure him, obviously, uh, up the court. They're going to try to force a turnover, try to turn that into points. That's what they're going to have to do. So I'm sure that's exactly what's being discussed here in the huddle with Kevin Van Streek and his team. It's a good timeout. Really for Hope to stop the clock, but I think Calvin could benefit from this timeout as well because they're not great at handling the ball. They want to get things set. Spadaski stepping in to say some line to shoot two here with 144 remaining. Full marks to Roach there. He didn't run away from the basketball or his responsibility, Brent. He was taking body hits, and he just said, okay, you're going to have to go through me to get it. And now he's at the line. Well, free throws can absolutely slice into a coach's heart when his team is missing him down the stretch. That's two big misses, but the Roach will get the next one. 
He now has a game high 26, his team up eight. Calvin just feels as though if they can just get one big stop here, this game might be theirs. Overway against Brink, who's playing him pretty well. Bowser against Schuster. That's a tough shot. Forced. Schuster pulled it out. Here's Brink across the timeline. Not a guy they want to foul. And that's Haberdink to the basket to score. Haberdink with eight. The lead is 10. Tannis for three. That's a rebound by Crombeen. Calvin's going to come out of there with a basketball. Mark Ditsworth says, uh uh. We're not buying that, but a takeaway by Crombeen who lays it up and in. Well, just when you think Calvin's got it salted away, it's not yet over, and Hope gets a quick timeout. That was crazy. Yeah, that was a flurry of activity there when it was, quite frankly, unbelievable, Tom. I really thought that Mark Ditsworth made a great no call on the sideline. We're getting to the point of the game where people are starting to try to sell one to the referee and flop a little bit. He didn't buy it. Gave it up softly to Crom Bean. And that's the basket by Haverding. Here's the play again. Crom Bean just ripped it out of the hands of Danny Rose. Pretty aggressive play by Crom Bean. Four fouls. You know, he reached right in there, got it, and scored. It... Well, Calvin, it becomes a quest now to gain the timeline. If they can get the ball over midcourt, they're going to force Hope to foul. And 17 for Brent Schuster, 24 for Ty Tannis. 16 for Bowser, but most of Bowser's came in the first half. Well, we'll see if Hope can uh, force another turnover here, Tom, with this press and uh, make things interesting again. Brink is go. They, they've got anybody out there who really feels like, I'm the guy, give it to me, I'll take care of business. Well, this is where uh, standing at the free throw line in practice every single afternoon over and over and over again this is where it's got to pay off you just got to get your breathing under control if you're a guy like brink right now and he looks like he's pretty settled and he puts a pretty good stroke on that one jordan brink freshman from indiana makes it a nine point game and we are down almost to the final minute in this one we'll get a lot of stops and starts here in the final 60 seconds or so but right now calvin still in control and brink makes another one 10-point lead again, and now we are inside of 60 seconds remaining. Calvin will try to guard the arc. That's an easy back cut for Crombeen. He's now got a half dozen. Rhodes in trouble. Mark Ditsworth called the foul. Actually, it was uh, Spadowski who called the foul, and Danny Rhodes with 52 seconds remaining gets to the line to shoot two more. A little surprised, Tom, that Hope is fouling so quickly and not letting Calvin uh, try to move the ball up yeah. court and force something. I think they'd like to play him. I think they believe they can take the ball away from Calvin in these situations, but uh, there's just no time anymore. It's got to be steal the inbounds pass or foul immediately. Rhodes now with a total of 28 by my tally. It is a 10-point lead. Here's Overway. That's a tough three ball there. Not by Crombeen, will not go out of bounds to Calvin. And now the Knights fans starting to believe that maybe they have put this one away. Well, I believe that's three straight Hope possessions. Uh. Whoa. Oh, Mark Ditsworth with the quick call there. It was very nearly a takeaway, but again, Calvin just hanging on for all it's worth. And Ditsworth is talking to Dave Crombeen, who has fouled out of the ball game, I believe. Only six points tonight, Tom, for Hope's uh, leading scorer coming into this one. A lot of him in the second half. Gallon with Schuster out there, Haverdink, Rotes, Snickers. And the man at the line, Jordan Brink, who's getting rich here at the end at the stripe. Brink now with seven in the contest. And 
you know, it's not inconceivable. Kelman could still get 